Hi, I'm Daniela and this is Jocelyn. Thanks for coming back to our channel. If you're someone who's asked yourself, why should I be drinking bone broth? This video is for you. Because in this video, we're gonna share why bone broth can help boost fertility. In this video, we'll bring you along while we make bone broth for the first time, and we're also gonna discuss its benefits. I have a friend who's been trying to convince me and get me on this bone broth bandwagon for quite some time, and I'm just like, ew, that sounds gross, I don't wanna make it, but. <laughs> she did it. <laughs> but then I learned some of the benefits, and I thought, all right, I guess let's give us a try. All natural bone broth is full of key building blocks for fertility, including good fats, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. And the best part is it's brought to your body in a very easily digestible way. Bone broth is said to balance your hormones, heal some fertility disorders, and improve your overall fertility. Although most articles we read were geared towards women and how bone broth boosts their fertility, it was noted that bone broth can boost male fertility as well. Bone broth not only supports the deeper body systems like our hormones, but it's also known to support our immune systems, helping our bodies overall. Keeping inflammation low is good for everyone's overall health, but especially when trying to conceive, we really want to avoid inflammatory foods and things so that when the sperm meets the egg, we have healthy implantation. Bone broth is also a great source of amino acids, proline, and glycine. Amino acids not only help hormone production, but also hormone detoxification. And they also balance your hormone levels, which can help in cases where you have like an estrogen dominant hormone imbalance. We see these things with like PCOS and um, endometriosis. An added bonus is bone broth is great for pregnancy too. So if you get in the routine of incorporating bone broth into your diet while you're trying to conceive, it's easy to just keep doing that throughout your pregnancy. Bone broth can help in managing morning sickness because it has a lot of nutrients that help calm the stomach. It's also nourishing when your body can't keep much down. After learning all this information, we decided we should give it a try. Of course, I jumped on the easy bandwagon and was like, all right, let's just go buy a carton of it from the store. But that same friend of mine was like, it's pretty expensive. You should probably just make it. It's really easy to make and you'll have a larger supply of it to last you longer. This was our first time throwing together our own bone broth, but I'm happy to report it was pretty easy to make. We prepared a turkey for dinner the night before. After we were done with dinner, we gathered all the bones and placed them into a crock pot. And we had so much, we wound up needing two crock pots. Yeah. So I added a bunch of carrots, celery, garlic, and onions. I also used like the scrap components of veggies that we normally wouldn't eat. That night when we made um, the turkey dinner, we like prepared carrots and a bunch of things. So all of the skin that I shaved off and the parts of the carrots that we generally wouldn't eat, I threw that in there as well. They're known to have tons of nutrients, although people don't like to serve them in their meals. It's great because we're going to strain off the veggies. We added lots of salt and whole peppercorns. We also added some thyme. Some recipes call for rosemary, but Daniela doesn't prefer the taste, so we just skip that. To top it off, we did add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. After we added all the ingredients together, we set both crock pots to low and just let them simmer for 12 to 16 hours. Throughout the day, I checked on the crock pots and gave them a little stir. They were actually smelling really delicious. You could smell them throughout the whole house. Once we cooked the broth for 16 hours, we let it sit until it was completely cool and then we started to strain it. We actually double strained it. The first time we used the traditional metal colander or strainer, but since we were using turkey, there were lots of little pieces and we wanted to make sure nothing got into our broth, so we used a finer, smaller strainer and put everything we collected into glass jars. I left out what I thought I could eat in the matter of four days. Um, we read online that it's probably best to only eat it within a four day period, and then I also stored the rest that I didn't think I could eat within four days in the freezer. When my friend shared her original recipe with me, she let me know the cheese is an Instapot. I don't have an Instapot, so I just Googled online and how to use a crock pot. You can use what you have. The crock pot was easy enough, just made a few simple adjustments. So that's how we made our broth. It turned out surprisingly really flavorful. 
it's easy to just sip on it all day and then when I don't want to sip on it and I want to eat it more like a soup I'll like warm it up with some mushrooms and spinach I also even made it once and used it as a wa it's a water replacement for pastina because then it is adding nutrients to what's normally just like a pasta meal now that we saw how easy it is to make we're definitely making it more often especially because of its versatility. It can be used on its own or it can be used to make other soups. We will share some of the links where we learned the information in the description below. And one of the links even has a recipe so you can make your own bone broth. We read that it's ideal to get two cups of bone broth in a day, although we're probably not hitting that mark ourselves. <laughs> if you found this content helpful for you, please be sure to like and subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, make sure to turn your notification bell on so you can stay up to date on all of our Lesbianist updates. See you soon.